Tunisia, a land of hidden treasures and captivating surprises. Have you ever wondered what lies beyond the postcard-perfect beaches and bustling markets? Prepare to embark on a journey filled with fascinating facts and unique insights into the rich tapestry of Tunisian life. From its vibrant culture to its stunning landscapes, there's so much more to discover about this enchanting North African gem. Get ready to be amazed as we uncover the lesser-known aspects of life in Tunisia that will leave you intrigued and inspired. So, buckle up and join us as we delve into the heart of Tunisia's captivating story. Number 1. The fourth most important city in the Islamic world. When we think about important cities in the Islamic world, we often think of famous places like Mecca, Medina, and Jerusalem. But there's a hidden treasure right in Tunisia, called Kairouan. It was built long ago, in 670 AD, by someone named Ukba Ibn Nafi. This city has a really interesting history that goes back for many, many years. But what makes Kairouan special is that it's the fourth most important city in the Islamic world. Yeah, it's true. After Mecca, Medina, and Jerusalem, Kairouan is right up there as a really important place for Muslims. At the center of Kairouan is the Holy Mosque of Uqba. It's a big deal, so much so that it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. People come here from all over to worship and show respect. This mosque is like a symbol of how important Kairouan is to Islamic culture. But Kairouan isn't just about old stuff. It's a busy place where Islamic things happen every day. People here learn about Islam, study it, and practice it. When you walk around Kairouan, you'll see lots of things. Busy markets, quiet gardens, and tall towers called minarets. It's like a big mix of old and new, all wrapped up in one amazing city. When you visit Kairouan, it's like your senses get a treat. You see, hear, and feel so much. It's a place that sticks with you long after you leave. Number 2. Women's Rights Champion in the Maghreb Region when you think about Tunisia, what pops into your head? Maybe it's the awesome beaches by the Mediterranean Sea, or the cool stuff about its culture and history. But guess what? Tunisia's also super cool for something else. Making things fair for everyone, especially girls and women. Even though lots of other places around it stick to old-fashioned rules, Tunisia is like a superhero for women's rights. One big thing they do differently is about inheriting stuff like land from parents. While other places might say only boys can inherit, Tunisia says, hey, that's not fair, and lets girls inherit too. How awesome is that? It's like saying, girls can be superheroes too. But wait, there's more. In Tunisia, kids can get two nationalities and last names from their moms. Yep, you read that right. In a place where family history is a big deal, Tunisia says, moms matter just as much as dads. These cool rules aren't just good for Tunisia. They're like a sparkly rainbow of hope for the whole world. They show that when a country cares about everyone being treated right, no matter if they're a girl or a boy, amazing things can happen. Number 3. People live underground. Matmata is a tiny town in Tunisia where the Berber people live. What makes this place special? It's not like the big cities or quiet villages around it. It's because of what's hiding under the ground that makes Matmata fascinating. Back in the old days, when the sun was too hot to handle from the Sahara Desert, smart people found a clever solution. They went underground to escape the heat. They didn't just dig holes randomly, they made proper homes down there. Can you picture it? They dug big pits and carefully shaped the walls to make cozy homes. These underground houses weren't just shelters. They were like secret hideaways from the blazing sun. They kept people cool without needing any fancy machines. Now, you might wonder, with all the modern houses available, why would anyone still want to live underground? Well, here's the surprising answer. For the people of Matmata, it's not just about sticking to old ways. It's about being practical. Even though we have cool gadgets and fancy buildings nowadays, living underground still has its charm. And guess what? One pit can hold not just one family, but five to nine families. Imagine that! It's like having a big family sleepover every day. Living like this brings people closer together creating a bond that's stronger than anywhere else. Number 4. The World's Largest Amphitheaters In the heart of Tunisia, there's this incredible place called El Jem Amphitheater. It's like a giant stone circle that was built a long, long time ago, back in 238 AD when the Romans were in charge. And guess what? It's still standing strong today. Imagine that. 
It's like a super old building that refuses to fall down. You know what's even cooler? El Gem isn't just any old pile of rocks. Nope. It's like a time machine that takes you back to when ancient people used to have big parties and watch shows. This place was made for fun stuff like that. And get this, it could fit a whopping 35,000 people. That's like a whole city packed into one giant stadium. Now picture this, El Gem is huge, like really, really big. It's not just big, it's one of the biggest in the whole wide world. It's like the size of the famous Colosseum in Rome. Can you believe it? That's some serious engineering magic right there. So, why should you care about some old amphitheater in Tunisia? Well, because it's not just history, it's like a living storybook. It tells us about the cool things people used to do for fun way back when. And if you ever find yourself in Tunisia, you gotta check out El Gem for yourself. Trust me, it's totally worth it. Number five, Tunisia has had only five presidents till now. Did you know that despite its long history, Tunisia has had only five presidents to date? That's right, just five individuals have held the highest office in the country since its independence. Let's explore this intriguing aspect further. First up, we have Habib Bourguiba, the founding father of modern Tunisia. Bourguiba served as the country's inaugural president from 1957 to 1987. During his tenure, Tunisia underwent significant socio-economic reforms and emerged as a regional leader in education and women's rights. However, Bourguiba's presidency came to an end in 1987 due to a successful coup. This marked the beginning of a new era with Zin El Abidine Ben Ali assuming power. Ben Ali's presidency lasted for over two decades until 2011, when Tunisia witnessed a historic event, the Arab Spring Uprising. This uprising, fueled by demands for democracy and economic reforms, led to Ben Ali's ousting and paved the way for a transitional period. Amidst the transition, Fouad Mebaza briefly took the reins of the presidency. His tenure was characterized by efforts to stabilize the country and initiate the drafting of a new constitution. Then, in December 2011, Tunisia saw the election of Monsef Marzouki as its president under the new constitution. Marzouki's presidency focused on reconciliation and rebuilding trust in the democratic process. Finally, in 2014, Beji K. de Sebsi became Tunisia's fifth president, continuing the country's journey towards democratic consolidation and economic development. Number six, great environmental diversity. Did you know that Tunisia is the smallest country in the Maghreb region? Yet it's home to over 12 million people across its 163,000 610 square kilometers. That's like fitting the population of a bustling metropolis into a compact, vibrant canvas. Now, when you think of Tunisia, you might conjure images of the vast Sahara Desert, stretching endlessly into the horizon. And you're not wrong. Tunisia shares this iconic desert with its neighboring Arab countries to the north. But here's where it gets interesting. Despite its desert terrain, Tunisia boasts a remarkable environmental diversity. Picture this. Alongside the golden sands of the Sahara, you'll find lush green landscapes teeming with olive trees. How's that for a contrast? Tuning into Tunisia's climate, we discover a delightful surprise. Along its coastline, kissed by the Mediterranean Sea, lies a temperate climate. It's not scorching hot like the Sahara, nor chilly like Northern Europe. It's just right, a Goldilocks zone, if you will. Now, why does this matter? Well, imagine being a tourist from Europe seeking an escape from the cold winters. Tunisia beckons with its balmy weather, offering a taste of the exotic without straying too far from home. So, whether you're trekking through the Sahara, sampling olives from local groves, or lounging on pristine Mediterranean beaches, Tunisia promises an adventure unlike any other. Number seven, the most venomous spider in the world. Tunisia is like a treasure chest, full of surprises in its landscapes. Imagine rocky hills standing tall, like guardians of the land, and then picture vast stretches of golden desert where the sun kisses the sand. In these diverse environments, there's a whole world buzzing with life, especially the tiny critters like insects and spiders. They might seem small, but there's one spider that stands out from the crowd, the Mediterranean black widow. Now, don't let the name scare you. Even though it sounds like its cousin from North America, it's got its own flair. But watch out. It's got a bite as fierce as its name. The venom of this spider is like a potion brewed for trouble. It's got powerful toxins 
that can make you feel like your muscles are doing the tango, or worse, make it hard to catch your breath. Scientists are like detectives trying to crack the code of these spiders, studying their every move and the secrets of their venom. While running into one of these spiders is like finding a needle in a haystack, it's always smart to keep your eyes peeled when you're out exploring Tunisia's wild side. You never know what surprises might be waiting for you. Number eight, women can pass on their names and nationalities to their children. In the last few years, Tunisia has become like a shining light in the Maghreb region, especially for women's rights. Something super cool is happening there. Now women in Tunisia can pass on their names and nationalities to their kids. It's not just about old family stuff anymore. Because of new laws, women can give their nationality and family names to their children. This is a big deal for fairness between men and women, and for recognizing families with just one parent. It's like saying, hey, mom's important too, and it's breaking old rules that usually gave more rights to dads. Now, kids in Tunisia can have both moms and dads' names and nationalities, which is awesome. Tunisian women also get equal rights in inheriting property. That means daughters can inherit just like sons can. This is a big change for making sure women can be financially secure on their own. So, what does all this mean for Tunisia? It shows how much they care about fairness and moving forward. By giving women more power, Tunisia isn't just changing its own future, but it's also showing the world how it's done. Number nine, many parts of the Star Wars movies have been filmed in Tunisia. Did you know that some of the cool Star Wars scenes were filmed in Tunisia? Yup. Except for one movie, they used Tunisia's awesome places for lots of the films. Like, remember Tatooine, the sandy planet? Tunisia was its real life double. And those forests on Endor? Yep, Tunisia again. Places like Jerba, Matmata, Tatooine, and more were like playgrounds for Jedis and Siths. Why Tunisia, you ask? Well, it's got these crazy deserts and old buildings that look out of this world, just like what George Lucas dreamed up. And get this, you can actually go visit these places. But here's the kicker. You gotta rent a car to get around cause they're kinda remote. Imagine cruising through the Tunisian desert, feeling like Luke Skywalker on an adventure. You can check out where Luke's home was or even explore these underground homes in Matmata that look just like Tatooine. And don't forget the souvenirs. They've got stuff like lightsaber keychains and little trinkets with Jawas on them. So whether you're a big Star Wars fan or just want a wild trip, Tunisia's got you covered. May the force be with you on your journey to this faraway galaxy. Number 10, around two thirds of the country's land is used for agriculture. In 2016, a whopping 64.84% of Tunisia's land was used for agriculture. That's a substantial portion. But what exactly are they growing on all that land? Well, let me tell you, Tunisia is quite the agricultural powerhouse. From olives to dates, fruits to tomatoes, and even potatoes, Tunisia cultivates a diverse range of crops. And let's not forget about their livestock. They're busy raising chickens, sheep, and cattle for meat production. It's like a bustling agricultural symphony out there. Now here's a fun fact. Tunisia's crown jewel in the agricultural world is none other than olive oil. That's right. Olive oil production is a big deal here, with Tunisia being one of the major exporters, particularly to Europe. Just imagine those vast olive groves stretching out across the landscape. But what does all this agricultural activity mean for Tunisia's economy? Well, agriculture plays a significant role, contributing to nearly 13% of the country's gross domestic product, or GDP for short. It's not just about feeding the population, it's about driving economic growth and stability. So there you have it, folks. Around two thirds of Tunisia's land being used for agriculture isn't just a statistic. It's a testament to the nation's rich agricultural heritage and economic importance. I don't know about you, but I find that pretty darn fascinating. Thanks for tuning in today. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more intriguing facts about our amazing world. Until next time, stay curious.